This is Emma Tattenbaum Fine from Political Subversities, and you're listening to Nursery, a podcast from Ohio's Creative Voice. The nursery and all of the trees cross over the dark, and some old parking lots hold my whimpering thoughts, and I'm on the next train. You and me can't you see what this means in the light of a torch realize nothing is forced nothing is forced hey guys welcome to nursery podcast my name is lee boyle clint elston okay so we're in beautiful world in warren ohio 141 west market street uh Guys, if you haven't been here, they do smoothies. They do you do soup, other stuff we like that. Soup, yes. What else do you guys do? Just if people are interested in like a healthy alternative place to go for a snack or a drink. Yeah, we have smoothies. We use uh, all natural ingredients, no artificial sweeteners or anything. We just honey, fruit, vegetables if the smoothie calls for it. And only a couple of them do. Um, Greek yogurt and did I say honey? Oh, 100% nice. juice. Nice man. That's awesome. And so, if anyone cares to check out Beautiful World, it's spelled beautiful and then space world, but it's W H I R L apostrophe D. Okay, so make sure you guys look that up online. Is there a website you prefer? Yeah, there, we have beautifulworld.com, or you can check out our Facebook or Instagram. Sounds good. No apostrophe in that for you older people that don't know how to work websites. Right. Um, so. Anyways, I can mention sponsors here just because we have like a little bit of slight relating in the genre because we're sponsored by Orange Avocado uh, Juicery, 1393 Boardman, uh, Canfield Road in Boardman, Ohio. And then to music, we, we're sponsored by Jimmy Fro in, Indie Music Show, and we're sponsored by Timeless Shots Photography, TimelessShots.com. Um, Speaking of Jimmy Fro Indie Music Show, local podcasts around here, they're not like bountiful, but there's a couple. And I want to mention to listeners who have followed along and listened to my ramblings and give a shout out to the Makeshift podcast. This is where I found you. And right. you were a guest there. And you're, you're friends with the people of the Makeshift Poets. If listeners don't know what that is, go search the Makeshift Poets, Makeshift Volume 1. Check out like, Brandon Noel is a name to look for. And there's, yeah, the book right here. Yeah. He's holding it. And it's got like some, it's got some awesome poets in it, and Volume Two's coming out, right? And it's pretty sweet stuff. And uh, your wife Mary's in there too. Yes, yeah. we're both in there. You're Mary in there. Mary's in there. Brandon's in there. People don't know these names. Do go find the Makeshift Podcast on iTunes or the Makeshift Poets Books on Lulu.com. I think it is. Yep. Yeah. A lot of info thrown at the listener, but <laughs> if you've followed for a long time, you've heard of this already. Yeah. But anyways, man, we're in your shop. You're running a small business in Ohio. What are your thoughts on Ohio as somebody who's setting up shop and trying to roll the dice on like a business? <clears throat> That's a good question. Uh, well, we, you know, we're in an interesting spot right here because this isn't. Um, the economy isn't the best, right? In Warren, you know, mm-hmm. I'm sure we like we were just talking to someone earlier today. If we were at the Eastwood Mall or Halland or something, we could probably uh, raise our prices a dollar on everything, and no one would even bat an eye. But yeah, we get a few people in here sometimes that that uh, not very often, not very often, but once in a while we'll have someone come in and and look at our prices and turn around and walk out. Yeah, and, and I'm sure you get the inverse in that there are probably people from out of town that sometimes come in and think you guys are cheap, right? If they're from a bigger city. Uh, no, it's mostly locals, locals that don't want it. Okay, right. Once in a and while. it's not very often. When we very first right. opened, it was more so, but that was before people actually started trying our stuff. Yeah, exactly. And they would see, like we've had people come in and uh, Look at our prices. Be like, oh, I'm not gonna get anything. And then they watch us make a smoothie, and then they order a smoothie. Yeah, because they see that we're using all real ingredients. Tons not, of cool stuff. Yeah, right. that's going into it. Now that's awesome, man. Like, at, at we don't even use ice. We don't even use ice. No, right, right. So same deal with us actually at Orange Avocado. Like, once or twice we have a friend of a friend from a bigger city who says our prices are low, mm-hmm. but we have. Oh, we uh, get people in yeah. here from other, like you know, from out of town. Yeah, USA. yeah. 
and you know, and the, and they yeah, they look at the prices and they actually are a little skeptical about trying because they because it's the opposite, right? Yeah, and they th- they think, but they try it out and they're like, you know, you guys are underpricing yourselves. Your guys' stuff is too <laughs> good for the prices that you yeah. have. <laughs> That's awesome, man. Um, we yeah, we just added soups and paninis and bubble tea. Oh yeah, bubble tea now too. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. Yeah. That's sweet. We've, we've had wraps and smoothies since we opened. We just mm-hmm. and we just kept on adding on smoothies and wraps from there. But we, but now we also. But with the colder months, we decided we needed to add some other options up there. So we have bubble bubble because we had people before we even opened. We had people asking us if we were going to do bubble tea. Mm-hmm. So that's good. There's not many places around here, correct? Right. Do that. Okay, that's cool. And what do you, do you have any events or anything coming up to plug for listeners who are familiar or are from Youngstown Warren area? Yes, um, there's one tomorrow night, but that's probably not gonna. It might not. Yeah, yeah it might so not. Time out. We'll, like, I'll go ahead and talk about um, uh, the end of February, February 21st. We're gonna have a paint night, paint a mandala, um, and that's gonna be it's forty dollars and. You and the, like there'll be someone here to instruct you on how to do so. They'll provide all the materials you need to paint. Uh, you also get a medium smoothie, uh, a panini, a, a bowl of soup, and there'll be a veggie tray. Is that all the? F- there might be something else we said we we're gonna provide to you. Well, anyways, that's anyway. And then there's going to be. Um, and, that, and you'll be able to, you'll learn how to paint a mandala, like, mm-hmm. and you'll, it's like a two hour thing. It's going to, it's, it's already, we already posted about that one. So you can check that out on Facebook. Okay. So, and, but there's two more events coming in March that we haven't even uh, put up yet. Um, we're going to have another psychic fair, which we just had a psychic. Oh yeah, that's right. Psychic, How'd that go? Yeah, it went really well. Good, good. We had, a, it was, we had two tarot card readers and, uh, a massage Reiki, mm-hmm. uh, and that went well. We're going to do our second one on March fourth. It's a Saturday, and then and we're looking to get those three are both coming are all coming back, and we're looking to try to find maybe a couple of more people, whether they're vendors mm-hmm. or or psychics or whatever. That's and cool. then uh, and then on March fourteenth, yes, March fourteenth, Brandon Noel is going to be doing a creative writing workshop or seminar oh cool so that's good yeah and listeners he's who i mentioned for the makeshift so do go to beautiful world on facebook or beautifulworld.com and check out those events now coming off um working here as an ohio and like you like your first thought was the prices when i was talking to you mm-hmm. about what it's like here but more personally for you uh do you care like about ohio like do you like starting a scene here or do you kind of wish you were somewhere else at some time you know what i mean i, have, like, I, was, I was i think i was just talking to brandon about this last night actually mm-hmm. um i have i don't remember ever feeling a deep desire to get away from ohio i know a lot of people from ohio seem to just want to get away from ohio yeah it happens i i, I used to have a deep desire to travel mm-hmm. but it wasn't a desire to get away from ohio it was just a desire to see as much of the world as i could see mm-hmm. you know and that desire has like waned over the years i would still like to but it's not as strong as it once was sure Where how old are you I'm 33. Okay. Yeah, I'm about to be 33 this month. Um, oh, well, happy birthday. Thanks, man. I And I, I do understand about um, being a little less adventurous as I get a little older. We're both still pretty young. But um, how has that affected your confidence? Is, is your confidence higher now that you're older? This has been a theme for this year. Or is it lower and you're like, I don't want to go on any more adventures. I'm scared now. Because some people get, as they get older, they get scared because they look back on all they got away with. Yeah. And they're like, what? Did I really do that? You know, they get kind of right. freaked out. And some people, are, as they go, they're like, they're blossoming. Like they're yeah. late blooming, maybe, or something. I'd say I feel more confident in general, but uh, I don't that's I don't I don't, I don't I think I'm just becoming um, settled, really, is why I'm yeah. not, why the desire doesn't seem to be as strong. Right, so it, it, that, that's from being confident of your, right. where you live and right. happy with it, I suppose. Right? Yeah. That's good. And, like, 
So what were you like before? Did you ever have time where you were just completely had zero confidence almost? Yes. Uh, yeah. In high school, junior high and high school, I had a very, very low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. And it's just, you know, from like my senior year to now, it's just been like a, seems like it's just a steady, slow, like uphill climb of building. Seems like every year I'm a little bit more confident than I was the year before. You know. That's good to hear. And what what do you attribute that to? I guess just life experiences. I don't really. Yeah. Sure. I, there's nothing I can really hold down. And you got you got a family, correct, and stuff like that. So I'm yes. sure like you feel settled in that regard too. Mm -hmm. But also, I mean, you are going on new adventures per se, as far as this place being relatively right. new and stuff like. So it's just a different way of doing. Exactly. It. Instead of just being penniless and traveling, right. running around, you're, you're Which that, trying to build something. To from me, you. used to be. I, I just had a fear. You know, I, I was just too scared to try that. But that's like I had a deep desire to just up and leave and not tell anybody. And oh, sure. Okay. You know, and not even. You know what I mean? Just, yeah. But and not necessarily move away, but just to spontaneously go. So, right. Yeah. And not have it as not have any idea of when I'm going to come back or. That's anything, that's you know? a, that's a fun thing. I, I will say that most of the times that I've traveled have had a very strict beginning mm -hmm. and end date because right. most of them were tours. Me too. Yeah. And like, but I know my my youngest brother. He did do that. There were times where he, there was a friend from Ohio who was living in Florida, visiting Ohio, and they were like, "Want to come back with us?" And he thought about it for about. 20 minutes and got in the car, you know, and so he didn't know when he was coming back. Right. Didn't know he was even leaving until 20 minutes before right. that. And uh, that's pretty cool, too. I mean, I have seen people that definitely do that. Right. And it's cool. Like, some of it is because they have an off season of work. Like, my brother works at camps. So, like, there's some times where there's just lag time. Mm -hmm. And some of it is just like I've seen it happen at younger ages where they, like, just didn't have a job yet or they were in between jobs and they were like, I'm going to do this. So, I, I, I do like that. And I have done things with my wife where we take a trip because we know it's our last hurrah before we're locked into some other thing job project whatever and that's fun too but yeah the structure involved in anything like that even if you don't plan it is usually pretty evident it's you can't really get away from it even if you're taking right. a road trip with no end in sight still got a plan like as you go right right <laughs> so it's interesting have you ever taken is there any particular story you have about traveling that you'd like to share young or older or yeah right? I, um i mean i've I grew up going on vacations, like every multiple vacations every summer. You mm -hmm. know, my that was real important to my mother to go on family vacations. You know, so mm. I've seen like a, when I was, when after I became an adult, like I started to realize in my mid twenties or so that like I saw more before I was an adult than most people see like their entire lives. You know, because a lot of people just don't leave their hometown. You know. Mm -hmm. But um, but now I was in, and plus I was in the Army Reserves for nine years, so I I, I went all over the place with them. Oh, okay. And uh, that's interesting. Yeah. So what what was that like? Was that was that like a good experience, character building, or are you, do you, did you hate it, or what was it? Uh, I I mean I I have I guess I have mixed feelings about everything that you know I come across in life. I didn't yeah. really hate it. There were things about it that I hated, but there were also there were a lot of awesome people I met, you know what I mean, I made a lot of really good friends in the army, and had a lot of fun with them in the army, you know, so, you know, you take the good with the bad, but, um, I don't know if it really built any character, really, uh, I mean, I'm sure it did help with my confidence, just because it helped get me, uh, it helped me build muscle, because I was real scrawny in high school, Oh, okay. and it kind of helped me, uh, because I was forced to, all throughout basic training in AIT, you know, I put on like 10 pounds of muscle, which was a was a real confidence booster. Oh, sure, yeah. And then, but really, like, it just you pretty much were told what to do up until you're a sergeant. You know what I mean? Up uh -huh. until, what, you're basically told to do everything. So I found that in my civilian life without having someone there to tell me what to do, I actually became, like, more lazy. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah. I'd be less disciplined, I think, even gotcha. if it's possible. So now, how long ago was that that you were in the army? I got out in 2010. Okay, so even seven, six, seven years later, 
civilian life. Obviously, like right. using that term, it's a good term, but you still got a piece of that with you because you're saying that. And like, if we run with that theme, civilian life, we don't have to sit around and compare and contrast you with your military versus right. not military. But here now, without structure, you built. You're you're trying to make your own structure out of like being here. Mm-hmm. Uh, you got a time, you got to be here, right. time you're going to leave, and stuff like that. And have you made yourself more organized because you were scared of that laziness? Or it's, you know? it's like becoming more organized is like a, a very, it's, I think I, I become more organized every day, but it's like a tiptoe forward every day. You know, it's, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and like and and I see over time I see like the you know how like I'm you know the business is benefiting how I'm benefiting in my personal life and everything but it is uh it isn't something I was able to just snap my fingers and overnight I was more organized you know mm-hmm. so it's something we're all we're, like all three of us that uh that that run the store it's because I don't I don't not, not we're all very creative but we're not very organized you sure know I mean? so, so that's we're, something you have to overcome. we're all yeah but and it's, it's and then you see you see and then when you do see one of the other ones do it like stepping up and tackling something it like inspires you to step up and and tackle something you know and, well, that's awesome yeah so so this i mean you're a good fit for this podcast in that we here are also very unorganized in that the open style the reason part of the reason the name nursery fits is because it's some sort of incubated conversation that doesn't have to have any real facts and that you know just like it's just us screwing around right. and just talking trash or whatever we want to do um, but as I go guest by guest it starts to form a certain face and so I feel like obviously this I mean this was known before even the first episode but I'm drifting towards creative people, of course. What do you think the creative tie between food, drink, and then music and poetry is? Why is that always somewhere in the same person or in the same ether of the mindset? You know what I mean? Why, why are those two things always together? Just to, just to guess yeah. on it, because I, I, well, I can't figure it out totally. I mean, really... Food and drink is an art form in itself. Sure, definitely is. You know, it's just a different sense. You know, like yeah. music or is you know is art for the ears and mm-hmm. um, like painting is art is art for the eyes and f- food and drink is art for the mouth. It can be. I mean, yeah. I'll, and that doesn't. I guess it's not always necessarily the case. But but what do you think made us think it art? Like it is an art form. Mm-hmm. It's beautiful to see stuff like this happen. But like people our age, is it because people were on tour and they stopped at restaurants and they became like, this coffee place is amazing, or this smoothie place is cool, or is it like because like everything they touch is an art form, or is it you know it's 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 interesting, right? Yeah. Like, do you, have you always felt creative even in the military? Did you always feel? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. And you know, there's sometimes people say no, that's organization, that's nothing creative about it. But right, obviously you didn't feel that way, and that's good. Yeah, I mean. I don't know. I was a little bit of up until I was, up until I made sergeant because mm-hmm. at that point I kind of had a. But up until then, I was I was kind of like the clown of the, you know, always trying to make everyone laugh and everything. Mm-hmm. Um, I kind of had to set an example once I became sergeant for like the lower enlisted, but. Mm-hmm. Uh, but so even then, I was finding ways to be creative. Whether I was, you know, I was in a. Um, we had a little band called Squid Murphy. It was we didn't play anywhere. We just kind of hung out and mm-hmm. and jammed after uh, drill on Saturdays. You know, because we all stayed the night there, so we'd mm-hmm. jam out and just play together. You know, we always said we'd go to open mic nights, but we never did. And mm. so that was a way of being creative. I remember one time we were somewhere and uh, I did little skits for for people. Like for the for the company and everything, like I did a little, I came up with a couple little sketches to kind of like help them pass the time and stuff. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So I don't, I always find ways to be creative somehow. Like one of the things I do is for here is I I'm like in charge of all the marketing for for Beautiful World, so mm-hmm. I'm always like taking pictures and editing them and yeah and stuff. So 
Well, that's good. It sounds like, yeah, well, and I think this is probably the case with a lot of people. Some people compartmentalize, but a lot of people walk around and kind of just add their touch to anything they're doing. Yeah. It could be military, it could be right. smoothie, it could be music, like you mentioned, skits, stuff like that. Like, it's cool to just kind of have such an open style that anything you set your gaze on, you kind of turn into, like, even if it's not known by it to anyone but you, some, right. something fun and creative. And right, something to help, yeah. you know. Yeah. Make your existence a little better, you know. So, so, yeah, and, the, so and, the, yeah. and the people around you as well, not mm-hmm. just for you, but for the people you're spending time with. Yeah, and so hopefully we're doing that with this podcast. People listening, maybe they'll get something out. We don't. You and I never know what we're saying, and then they'll catch one thing and they'll be like, "Oh my god, that's awesome!" <laughs> and they'll hopefully it'll change their day. So, though it's a short episode, in wrapping up, let me ask you, like, what about Warren, Ohio specifically? Do you like, like? What is it about this town that kind of inspires you? Um, you know, it's... I don't... I, I don't know if I can really say. Uh, I grew up in Southington, which is about 20 minutes from here. It's a little, you know, small, much smaller town. Mm-hmm. And uh, I only had 42 students in my graduating class. But, um... But you know, I live I live with Mary here in Warren, and we and her and her friend decided to open up a shop. They decided, you know, what, we're gonna, and then like two or three days later, they uh, they heard about this space, and and they came and checked and they came and checked it out, and it was really really affordable. So we all decided to jump on it and. I like being here. I like all our customers that come in. I like all the like all other people that own businesses down here. Mm-hmm. But uh, I don't know. I I have a lot of love for Warren, but I don't know if it specifically inspires you don't know if you me. Can pinpoint that. Yeah. Well, I mean, sounds you like know. this. I mean, like a lot of things. Sounds like this endeavor was something that <clears throat> kind of crept up. Right, you guys, but in a good way. Right. So maybe the story is yet, yet to be written on that. Yeah. You know, because uh, I'm from, in a different way, I'm from East Palestine, Ohio, moved to Boardman. So to me, it's also kind of this somewhat bigger city as compared. I didn't have 42, I had more than that, but it's still small, small town school mentality. Yeah. yeah. And so everyone knows like, everyone. Right. And maybe that's what draws makeshift nursery, all this other stuff together is that <clears throat> there is a small town mentality in most of the people that are on the podcast or that musicians we know. I mean, because it's Ohio. Mm-hmm. You can't really get away from that. There's always a rural attitude, even if you live in Columbus. Right. Um, so, I mean, that's a good thing. That's a good note to end on based on the story yet to be written in Warren, Ohio. Listeners, make sure that you go to beautifulworld.com Again, that's W-H-I-R-L-D Dot com, beautifulworld.com. Yeah, we also have a gift shop with all kinds of soaps and candles and other locals. That yeah, was all, mostly all, almost everything in here is local, locally mm-hmm. made. Uh, we have crystals as well. And yeah, man, some soap, some candles, some art, art for sale, hats, scarves. I think I yep. see. Uh, some blankets. I think I see, or something like that. T-shirts. Yeah, there's all t-shirts. T-shirts. And, gotcha. Yeah, man, it's a it's a good place, guys. So do stop in if you're anywhere near Warren, Ohio, listeners. Stop in and check it out, or go on Facebook, find Beautiful World. Um, got some coffee here too. Even yeah. so they kind of got the full package as far as that goes. Um, so guys, uh, check out ThirdClass.net for the music, Bullskit.com for like rainy day comedy. If you want to know more about the surrounding crew of Nursery, that's those are some good websites to start with. New album, Virginia's Playlist, is out. It's coming on vinyl. It's out on CD and Spotify and Apple Music now. And um, again, most importantly, beautiful, W-H-I-R-L-D.com. Check out this new smoothie shop in Warren. Can you say, look, Mom, we're on a podcast? Look, Mom, we're on a podcast. Thanks for being here, Clint. Take My it pleasure. Easy. Thanks, man.